In this Maui, Hawaii video, I'm going to show you how to make the most of your time here by sharing where to stay, things to do, food to enjoy, and transportation recommendations. My name is Marilee Blair and travel is my life. My goal is to bring you those peak experiences exploring the world one video at a time with me. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button to support this channel. Now let's get into Maui. Maui is the second largest of the Hawaiian Islands, located in the Central Pacific Ocean, and it's a popular tourist destination and honeymoon spot. The island is characterized by diverse landscapes, including volcanic craters, lush rainforests, waterfalls, and beautiful beaches. Maui's largest industries are tourism and agriculture. They are a major exporter of macadamia nuts, coffee, sugar, and pineapples. The most common question a lot of you are asking is if you should visit Maui after the August 2023 fires. And the answer is yes. Hawaii's governor and mayor invited tourists because they are relying on the tourism to help financially support and rebuild what the fires destroyed, which is what I have currently researched. So just make sure you are staying up to date on news depending when you have your Maui trip booked. I have been to Maui 11 different times. Once when I was younger for a family trip and the other 10 times was when I went for work. And all of them were seven day, six night trips during April 2016 to June 2018. My last most recent trip to Maui was on June 14 to June 20, 2018. Since Maui is basically my second home and I've been so many times, I feel like I'm a pretty good expert in helping you plan your Maui vacation. The two hotels that I highly recommend are number one, the Sheraton Maui Resort and Spa, or number two, the Westin Maui Resort and Spa, which are the main two hotels I always stayed at for work. They are both located on Kanapali Beach in Lahaina and are walking distance of each other. They are the best locations in Maui if you wanna be right on the beach and be in the Lahaina area. Since I always stayed at these resorts for work, I luckily always had my hotel stay for free. So I researched the room I stayed at the Sheraton, which was the Oceanfront King guest room, one king bed oceanfront, which currently costs about $821 a night, including the $45 resort fee for six days and five nights, that total is $4,105. But they have remodeled it since the last time I was there. I can see why the price has significantly increased. I found that the cheapest room they have costs about $668 a night if you don't want the same room I stayed in. One incredible and unique free experience at the Sheraton Maui Resort and Spa that happens at sunset every night is the famous cliff diving ritual. It only happens at Sheraton. And that's been a tradition since the resort first opened in 1963 that honors the last chief of Maui, Kahekuli, who used to leap from Pukeka's sacred promontory to show his spiritual strength. So make sure if you stay here at the Sheraton that you experience watching this ritual at least one of the nights you are here. When I would stay at the Westin, I always stayed in the Kukai Ocean View guest room, which is one king bed with the ocean view, mid floor with a balcony room, which currently costs about $749 a night, including a $45 resort fee. For six days and five nights, the total is about $3,748. I did find that the cheapest room they have currently costs about $707 a night if you don't want the same room that I stayed in. Now, here are my top 15 things to do in Maui. Number one, Road to Hana Tour. The Road to Hana Tour allows you to travel to Heavenly Hana, where a full day of incomparable sights awaits your discovery. The winding road to Hana snakes along miles of open, unspoiled coast filled with white sand beaches. And you will see lush island landscapes spotted with magnificent waterfalls, lush jungles, and fragrant rainforests. And you will witness lava fields created by Haleakala's last eruptions and an incredible landscape rich with native flora and fauna. Some points along the way of Road to Hana cruise are Kiana Village, Waikana Falls, South Wailua Falls, and Ohio Gulch, home of the seven sacred pools. And one of my absolute favorite parts of Road to Hana is the gorgeous Black Sand Beach, which is gorgeous to see in person. I actually took this picture of it right behind me. It was formed by lava flow that has cooled 
hardened and then fractured into tiny pieces by the relentless battering of the ocean waves over thousands of years. Road to Hana is a narrow, steep road to drive through on your own, but it can be done, as I have had many friends do that drive. But make sure whoever drives you and your family is an alert driver and okay with very sharp turns. Or if you want to sit back and relax, you can enjoy a Road to Hana guided tour. That's what I always did since I would go for work. So I will link the tour link in the description of this video if you'd like to go that route. But this is truly one of the best tours and experiences in Maui. The only reason why the next time I do Road to Hana that I would want to drive on our own is so we could stop and spend longer at certain spots like the Black Sand Beach and see things I didn't get to before like the Red Sand Beach located in south of Hana Bay and just to have more time at the waterfalls. Number two, Haleakala National Park. Either do the sunrise or sunset tour. Haleakala National Park is home to Maui's highest peak, rising 10,023 feet above sea level. Haleakala means house of the sun and is where demigod Maui lassoed the sun, slowing its passage so people had more time to cloth and grow food. The dormant volcano's crater is actually a valley carved by erosion. Hiking and stargazing are also really popular activities to do there. Sunrise at the summit of Haleakala has been a popular visitor attraction since the late 1800s when Samuel Clemens wrote, it was the sublimest spectacle I I ever witnessed and I think the memory of it will remain with me always. I always did the sunset tour for work and thought it was absolutely stunning with it being covered in clouds but have heard the sunrise tour is also amazing so next time I'd love to experience the sunrise tour myself. And definitely bring a thick jacket. It's a lot colder when you are there because of the high elevation than the rest of Maui. And if you decide to book a tour I will include my get your guide link in the description of this video. Cost is about $197.92 per person for the sunset tour. If you decide to drive on your own and do the sunrise tour, a reservation per vehicle is required for each vehicle entering the park from 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. So please make sure to purchase a reservation on the Haleakala National Park website. Since parking at the Haleakala Summit is limited and the reservation ensures that you will have a parking space. I wouldn't miss this when you come to Maui. Number three, go to Molikini Crater. To experience Molikini Crater's beauty, you would take a snorkeling boat so you can enjoy this partially submerged volcanic crater with so many beautiful fish to see. Number four, a helicopter ride. If you have never done a helicopter ride, in Hawaii, I highly recommend doing one in Maui. It's such a great way to enjoy the beauty of the gorgeous colors and incredible landscapes of Maui from above the sky. There are so many different helicopter companies that you can choose from, but the one company that I always use for my work trips in Maui is called Maverick Helicopters, and they depart from Kahuli Heliport. They are the best company to use as I've used them for clients several times and they have the best customer service and the best pilots. My clients always book the Molokai Voyage Tour, which is absolutely stunning, and I loved enjoying it with them every time. This dual island helicopter adventure highlights the neighboring island of Molokai, also known as the Friendly Isle, to witness the world's tallest sea cliffs and some of Hawaii's most spectacular scenery. Fly over the Palio Channel featuring some of the most scenic waters between the islands. Observe the iconic Elephant Rock from a bird's eye view on your way to Molokai. Journey above the remote North Shore and Halawai Valley while enjoying perspective of some of the tallest waterfalls in Hawaii. Gaze in amazement at Molokai's fringing coral reef and majestic ancient fish ponds built approximately 800 years ago along the southern coast. It's about a 55 minute helicopter ride and costs about $369 per person. I've been very fortunate that my job has allowed me to experience a lot of helicopter rides for free in my life from Maui, Kauai, Vegas, Florida to Monterey Bay. And so far, the one in Maui is still my absolute favorite helicopter ride to this day. Number five, 
Luau. You have to do a luau. If you have never done one in Hawaii, you must experience it at least once in your life. It's such a fun experience and a big part of the Hawaiian culture to see the beautiful Polynesian and Hawaii dancing show along with a delicious buffet dinner and yummy drinks. The only luau that I've enjoyed in Maui is the one at the Western Maui Resort and Spa, which is called the Wailea Luau. I looked at the cost and right now the cheapest price starts at around $210 per adult, $110 per kid, and it's free for ages three and under. It's a great luau that is amazing to enjoy if you are staying at the Westin, so all you have to do is walk there from your room. And I have heard very amazing things about the Sheraton Maui Resort and Spa Luau called Maui Nu Luau at Black Rock. The starting cost is about $198 per adult and $110 per kid, and it's free for ages five and under. Number Six, enjoy the gorgeous beaches of Maui. Of course, if you are staying at the Westin or Sheraton, then you need to make sure to relax and enjoy Kanapali Beach. It's a very popular stretch of golden sand with resorts, dining, and plenty of shopping, especially if you're staying here. And you can easily walk to Whaler's Village to enjoy some great restaurants and again, get some souvenirs while you're there. But some other gorgeous beaches that are great to explore in Maui is the gorgeous McKenna Big Beach in the South Maui region, Napili Bay Beach in the West Maui region, Hamoa Beach, which is about two and a half miles outside of Hana Town, Hana Kulani Beach with its gorgeous black sand located in Wanapana State Park, and Kahileo Beach with its beautiful red sand, and Kapula Beach, famous for being a great snorkel beach in Maui. Number seven, whale watching. During the winter months, you can take a whale watching tour to see humpback whales that migrate to Maui's warm waters. This is a really popular tour to experience that I highly recommend that you can use my get your guide link to book. Number eight, do a snorkel cruise or sunset dinner boat cruise. When you do a snorkel cruise, it's a great way to enjoy some food and enjoy better snorkeling parts of Maui on a boat ride that allows you to see other parts of the island. I always use Trilogy for snorkel cruises for clients, but you can also book this directly with your hotel or with my Get Your Guide link. And if you're looking for a romantic evening, a sunset dinner cruise is a great way to enjoy great food with your loved one while sailing the gorgeous waters of Maui. My husband and I did this when he joined me on a work trip and we loved how romantic it was. I will include my link for both cruises. Number nine, Iao Valley State Park. Discover the lush Iao Valley with its iconic eye needle and a natural rock formation. Number 10, the Maui Ocean Center. Visit the Maui Ocean Center to learn about the marine life of Hawaii through interactive exhibits. Number 11, Ali Kula Lavender Farm. You'll get to wander through lavender fields and gardens with panoramic views of Ali Kula Lavender Farm. Number 12, the Maui Pineapple Tour. Doing a Maui Pineapple Tour is a fun experience because you get to see what it's like working in a pineapple farm and learn about the growing cycle and cultivation techniques of Maui Gold Pineapples. Plus, they give you a free pineapple on every tour and they are so delicious. Number 13. Book some fun water or adrenaline rush activities while you are here directly with your hotel or get your guide like zip lining, horseback riding, kayaking, snorkeling, parasailing, surfing, sailing, biking, and scuba diving. There's truly so many things that you can do in Maui. There's something for everybody. Number 14. Explore the gorgeous waterfalls of Maui's beauty, such as the King's Gardens Maui, Waimuko Falls, Waikani Falls, Upper Waikani Falls, Wailua Falls, Alele Falls, and Kopelula Falls. And there are still so many more than this to explore. Number 15, visit the historic town of Paia and the North Shore area. Paia is famous for its surfing beach called Hukapa Beach Park. This town offers you a lot and it can easily be a day long outing. So make sure that you plan for the time to explore. So if you're planning at all to eat at Mama's Fish House on this trip, then you can hang out and relax at Baldwin Beach Park, then head to Mama's Fish House when you are ready to enjoy some amazing seafood. Now. Here are some of the best restaurants that you have to try when you're in Maui. Number one, Mama's Fish House. 
they book up on reservations extremely fast. So try to book reservations as soon as you know you're going to Maui. It will be so worth it. It's far from Kanapali, but a lot closer to the OGG Maui airport. So if you are going to plan a day to be exploring this area, it's easier to do your group activities and your dinner in the same distance together. Number two, Leilani's on the beach, located in Whaler's Village on Kanapali. They have amazing seafood and they have the famous hula pie dessert that you have to experience at least once in your life. It's so delicious. The hula pie dessert has an amazing crust and a layer of cool chocolate fudge that sits atop with the ice cream giving form to this and it's made with macadamia nut ice cream stacked high on scrumptious chocolate cookie. Whipped cream dances at its base before decadent hot chocolate fudge is poured over the top and drizzles to each side. Number three, Hula Grill, located in Kanapali and Whaler's Village also. They are also known for their amazing seafood and they also have the famous hula pie. Number four, Monkey Pod Kitchen, located in Whaler's Village on Kanapali. They also have amazing fish and all kinds of great seafood and other entrees. Number five, Duke's Beach House. Again, they are the same chain as Hula Grill, so you will also experience some amazing delicious seafood and again, another chance for you to get the famous hula pie. Number six, the Fish Market Maui. They have local fishermen who bring you the catch of the day every day. So they have some of the freshest fish you'll find on the island. So definitely enjoy their fresh pokey and the most amazing fish tacos from here. They take cash only, so make sure to bring some cash and pay attention to their hours on Yelp and their Facebook page. Number seven, definitely do a dinner sunset cruise. It's extremely romantic and a great way to enjoy a delicious dinner with a romantic boat cruise along the waters of Maui. Number eight, do the luau dinner. I would recommend either the luau at the Westin or Sheraton Hotel if you stay at one of them since all you have to do is walk down from your room to experience such an amazing dinner and show. And make sure while you're in Maui, get a fresh coconut, pineapple, and some delicious Hawaiian coffee while you're in Maui. Transportation. When booking your airport shuttle, since Maui OGG Airport is far, especially if you're staying in Lahaina, it's about a 50 minute drive. So I highly recommend using Roberts Hawaii. They are the shuttle company we use on the majority of my Maui work trips for me and my clients. And we never had any issues with them and the price is comparable to other shuttle companies. One time I did have a shuttle company not show up to get my clients, so I I immediately contacted Robert Hawaii and they were able to get them. So I would just recommend using them if you are going to use a shuttle company. And I will add their phone number to the description of this video. Depending what activities you do, instead of paying to rent a car from the airport, which is really expensive, I actually highly recommend using Turo. It's like the Airbnb version of renting a car, but was way more affordable than renting a car. We used it when we were in the Big Island. I didn't use it for any of my work trips in Maui since I was able to expense my Ubers and tours. But when I go back to Maui, I will definitely use Turo to go to the beaches, hikes, and waterfalls that are far from the resort and easier to get to by driving. Cost depends on the vehicle that you choose. And I would definitely recommend paying for insurance since you actually can't use your own vehicle insurance for their cars if something were to happen. And definitely compare costs to see what is most convenient for what you want to do on your Maui trip. Thank you all for exploring the world one video at a time with me, your own personal bougie budgeter. If you found this video helpful, check out my Big Island, Oahu, and Kauai YouTube videos that people really enjoyed. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and look for brand new episodes every Wednesday. And for all helpful info I mentioned in this video, look for them in the description below.